Hello viewers, welcome to Ultimate Gaming Guide. Welcome to another computer upgrade tutorial. Uh, this time it is Dell Optiplex 7010 MT. So these computers were um, uh, released back in about 10 years ago, uh, back in 2014, 2013. Uh, but uh, these computers are still relevant these days uh, because uh, when they come up with uh, the Dell actually put their best efforts in these Optiplex computers so uh, and they have really good hardware uh, which is still kicking uh, as you can see why it's uh, I have this little slide about why it's worth to do the upgrades because uh, this computer is already comes with a very good CPU Core i5 3570 and uh, back in the days uh, when Intel when they're doing their third gen fourth gen they were kind of like ahead of their time and uh, I know there there are some dark period afterwards where there was no uh, significant upgrades but uh, those uh, third gen fourth gen gens Intel CPUs were like really good and, and they can still deliver some good performance. And another good thing about this computer, this computer already comes with a standard uh, power supply housing. So any kind of standard power supply will work. And it also comes with not one, not two, four DDR3 RAM slots. So, um, so you can uh, put plenty of RAM in it if you would like. But, uh, and you can also get these RAMs for really cheaper uh, in used market. And another thing, uh, as you can see, this uh, front grill, uh, this computer has a front mesh grill, so that will ensure plenty of airflow, which uh, you need plenty of airflow if you're trying to do gaming because gaming will generate a lot of heat. Okay, and uh, before we go any further, let's see what's inside this computer. Please disregard this GPU here, so uh, there won't be any GPU, um, but if you're trying to install any kind of GPU, you have to change your power supply first. So uh, there's actually uh, two PCI Express slots here. Uh, one, one of the slots is blocked by this GPU. So two PCI Express slots, so you can install um, a GPU in one of the PCI Express slots and another PCI Express, you can use it for installing an NVMe drive. So very handy. And as you can see, there are four uh, RAM slots. These RAM supports up to 1600 megahertz uh, speed, and there are there are two hard drive bays. You can insta fill them up with a SSD drive or hard drive if you have cheap hard drive available. And there is enough room to fit a GPU, but you cannot go too long, too big, uh, about eight inches length. But if you if you're trying to put a like a longer GPU, it will uh, this hard drive bay will block. So you you won't be able to fit a beefier GPU. And another problem of installing a beefier GPU is this little bracket here. See this little blue tab? So if you try to put a, like a um, bigger size GPU, what will happen? This you won't, You're not gonna be able to close this tab. So, but and but it's okay if you're trying. Um, if you're if you want to lose this uh, tab, you can. Uh, it's not super important, but it's gonna look a little bit ugly. It's not gonna look finished. So there's the one thing to note, just go with the non-beefy, uh, like a mid-sized GPU. And for storage upgrade, uh, for easier installation, uh, for just like a plug and play situation, you can go with the two point, traditional 2.5 inch SATA SSD, but you can also take advantage of an NVMe SSD because uh, like, you know, a regular uh, SATA SSD would score about only 80 something, but uh, with the NVMe SSD, it will be, you can triple the performance, like 260, 270. You can triple the performance uh, with the NVMe SSD. So it's, and you can do so because you have an extra PCI Express slot available. But uh, one thing to note, when you are doing in doing a uh, Windows installation in this computer, and if you have if you're willing to put an NVMe SSD in there, make sure you change your boot option to UEFI from uh, from legacy to UEFI. UEFI. Just uh, restart your computer, press the F2 button, and get to BIOS and change your uh, boot option to UEFI, and then install like a Windows 11 or Windows 10. 
uh, one thing to note, you do have to pay for a Windows key here because uh, these computers uh, actually came with Windows 7. So Windows 7 is not relevant these days and you cannot upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10 or 11 anymore. So you have to pay for a key and get a Windows uh, 10 or Windows 11 installation media and install Windows on it. And for power supply upgrade, uh, like I said, any standard power supply would work. This is the power supply that I'm using. It's a Corsair 430 watt, uh, which was enough, which is enough for this computer. So any kind of, if you have a, any kind of uh, power supply that you have laying around, um, anything from 450 watt to 650 watt should be enough, but make sure it's an 80, 80 plus certified one. Okay, don't don't try to put a like a mm, non-certified power supply. That's never good for your computer. But whatever power supply you get, make sure it has an eight-pin PCIe connector and make sure it has a four-pin CPU connector. And any like I said, uh, you don't need any kind of modification. The standard 24-pin ATX cable will fit on this motherboard, uh, so you don't have to worry about that. And as for the GPU upgrade, uh, I would suggest to go with the single fan GPU just to be safe. Uh, like I said, this is a beefier GPU or longer GPU is not going to work for this computer or not or not going to fit in this computer. Uh, just don't get anything that is more than eight inches in length. Uh, but uh, whatever GPU you get, make sure it has a uh, eight pin uh, PCIe connector. So that way you can overclock it and get more performance out of it. Uh, and like I said, I would um, avoid beefier heatsink, GPU with beefier heatsink. And as for the RAM upgrade, uh, this is the RAM that I'm using. Uh, this is a Micron RAM 4 GB. So I have four of these RAM, uh, 1600 megahertz. So you don't have to get the exact same RAM, but make sure or whatever DDR3 RAM that you get, make sure you get the 1600 megahertz or PC3 uh, 12,800. So that's the number that you're looking for. So any kind of RAM like Micron, Samsung, Crucial, that will work. If you can get a RAM with the heatsink, uh, that's be better. Um, but these are the these these are the RAM that I'm using. I had these available. Uh, so and these these are performing quite good. And so after installing everything, uh, this is the performance. Uh, this is the kind of performance that you can expect. This is a Nova Bench score where they kind of um, uh, kind of uh, benchmark all the components. As you can see, I'm doing a 437 on CPU score, 662 on the GPU score using a 1660 Super. And for the memory score, I have four, four GB RAMs. I'm getting 241. That's a pretty decent score. And for the storage score, I'm getting 78. This is not that great, uh, but if you were to use an uh, NVMe drive with an adapter, you can essentially triple this score, get like 250, 260, something like that. And now it's time to see the 3D Mark score. 3D Mark score is a 3D Mark is a software uh, by Steam, and uh, you can see uh, your individual score, uh, individual GPU score, and the CPU score. As you can see, my GPU score is really high, and my CPU score is uh, kind of not that great. So my GPU is being bottlenecked by my CPU. Uh, so that's the one thing to note, but I'm still getting, uh, the combined score is still pretty good, 5,214. So just for comparison, this score is pretty amazing uh, when it comes to like, you know, office laptop, uh, recent office laptops or regular laptop computer, or even uh, like a, a Asus Rogue Alley, uh, which is a, a handheld device. Uh, but uh, I was I did a benchmark test on that, and I only got a score of 1500. So compared to that, 5000 score is really good, and you can play lots of game in it. Just cannot play games that are CPU intensive. And I actually did not have like a whole lot of game to test. Uh, this is the only game I tested. This is the Dark Soul Remastered, and as you can see, this game was not actually uh, CPU heavy. This is uh, only taking uh, very little, little resources. Um, 
only 40% of the 39% of the GPU was utilized. Only 18% uh, of the VRAM was utilized and only 22% of the RAM was utilized. And I was getting solid 60 FPS without any kind of hiccup. So this, like I said, this computer is still relevant and it, it can still deliver decent performance. So this is the total expense summary. I got the Dell 7010 tower from eBay for only $40. And the Corsair 430 watt power supply for Facebook Marketplace for $10, 1660 Super for $50, and uh, SATA SSD 2.5 inch for $5, and uh, 1600 megahertz RAM for $10. Or uh, actually, it was actually free. So you can get some crazy deal on Facebook Marketplace if you're looking. So my total expense was $115 only, and I got a very good computer. Uh, that can deliver some performance and do some gaming. Uh, so my final verdict, so with this low CPU score, it, it will cause some GPU bottleneck, but uh, this still works great for a GPU intensive game because most of the games are GPU intensive. So this this works for still works for light gaming for 1080p gaming. Uh, you can still get decent FPS with the games like Apex Legend, uh, Valorant, Minecraft. Uh, so this computer is still good for school, doing light photo editing work, video editing work, and uh, still a great computer with 5,214 score when you compare against like a non-gaming laptop. So, so that's my final ver verdict. It's totally worth it for spending $115 and get a great computer like this. I hope this information, all these informations were helpful. So if you have any question, uh, Put it in the comment section. I will try my best to answer those questions. Uh, and that's it for today. Have a good one.